All right. Well, good evening. It's uh, pretty much six o'clock on the uh, on the button here in Canada, in Ontario, actually. And we have a few of our pastors and friends standing by uh, live from Liberia. So they're four hours ahead. So they're already at 10 o'clock in the evening. So I don't want to keep them any later than I have to. So first of all, let me just say welcome. Thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. And this is something that's been on my heart to do for, for a while. Of course, we've never stopped praying for Liberia. We've always been praying. But uh, a few weeks ago, we started to uh, just see an increase in activity and, and, and things were, were happening. And we had uh, just um, all of a sudden death started to occur, delays started to occur. And we just felt like we were really coming up against something. And we wanted to uh, go outside, just, you know, the people who we have normally praying for us and invite everybody who follows me whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, wherever it is that you're tuning in from and you're watching this after the fact. Thank you so much for, uh, for being willing to be here tonight. And um, I'm going to try not to do a lot of the talking tonight because it's really not about me. It's about uh, the pastors and the churches and the people that we're ministering to in Liberia. So let's get to it. I have a very lovely uh, co-host who's going to be with me for these prayer meetings. Uh, this is somebody who has spent uh, over 40 years praying, interceding. He knows uh, what this is all about. He's got a great heart, and I thought I would ask him and invite him to, uh, to join me. So let me bring him in to the meeting. I think you're going to recognize this guy. There he is. Oh, there you are. Well, there you are. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, so I was just introducing uh, you to the people who are, who are watching. I didn't tell them your name just yet. Uh, we worked together for, for many years, and I think we've known each other for a while, right? No, you're talking to me. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Clyde. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I wasn't sure there. <laughs> yeah, just a few years, like... Uh, uh, over as long years. as you've been married to our daughter. <laughs> yeah, um, coming up on 33 years next month, actually. Yeah, And wow. so I, I just wanted, you know, um, it was important for me to have you uh, a part of this. You're somebody who's been praying for Karen and I in our ministry, no matter where we were. Uh, yes, praying for exactly. us for many, many years. And when we talked about doing this Lift Up Liberia, and we wanted somebody to... Uh, to kind of co-lead, co-host, just kind of stand alongside this. I, there was no one else I'd rather have than, than you. So tell us a little bit about what God's been doing in your heart regarding Liberia. Um, just real quick, because it's already past 10 o'clock over there. We want to get these guys on the screen as soon as we can. But just share a little bit about like what you've been observing all these, over these past couple of years as Karen and I have been you know, moving out into Liberia. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say that it's a wonderful privilege to be here with you, Joe. And of course, with Karen and my wife, Marion, is right in the backdrop here. She's watching in and listening mm -hmm. to every word. And we're very excited about that. And uh, that family tie is such a blessing because we've been working together in prayer and in ministry for so many years now. That's it's quite. I know it is. Well, it is Turn off the oh mic. My goodness. Anyway, uh, I, I want to be very quick with this to simply share that uh, since we heard of Liberia and the story of how God uh, so the initial seeds uh, of life uh, through his son Jesus in Liberia, this uh, has grabbed our attention from the word go, and we have never let go, and uh, we can't wait to hear each and every report. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm picking them up and reading them within minutes of their arrival. Uh, I just... Uh, I put all your letters in here today uh, in oh, a nice new binder. 
Well, look at uh, you. So we can have everything <laughs> all ready, and I got pages ready to write all the prayer requests down. Okay. So that's my initial introduction, and I just can't wait to uh, uh, meet all the brethren and sisters and uh, and the others that will join us for these prayer times. Well, we're going to try to bring them online. Um, th th this is this is Africa we're talking about, right? So. <clears throat> things um, are, are different there in how we operate. You know, for all the years uh, I've worked here in Canada, in the U.S., in Israel, different parts of the world, we're so used to having, you know, uh, high-speed internet and Wi-Fi access everywhere we go. And we did kind of a run-through with, with, uh, with Clyde and some of the other guys in Liberia on Sunday, and we were having a pretty difficult time getting a stable connection. Uh, some of these guys kind of live out there, and so network isn't always uh, the greatest. So while I'm waiting for a couple of guys to, to come on, I have some dear friends who are, who are standing by just kind of, <clears throat> if you're watching this on, on, on Facebook, you know, you're, 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 yeah, you're just seeing the results of what we're doing here in Zoom. So we have a bunch of people in what they call the Zoom room. They're standing by just praying quietly in the background. And I've asked a few of them if they wouldn't mind uh, just kind of jumping on and saying a few words about uh, what we're doing. So I'm going to start with a, a dear, dear friend of mine. And uh, I hope you can hear me, Stuart. I think you're, you're here in the background. Stuart Vandervelden is uh, not, just one of our, not just one of our board members, but he is a dear, dear friend. He's been with uh, Ken and I through, through thick and thin, through everything that we, we've gone through. So it's good to see you there, sir. Thanks for uh, taking the time to meet with us tonight. My uh, pleasure. I'm out here in my backyard, so I hope you... Uh aren't distracted by the kids laughing and playing in the background, but uh, um, sometimes it's uh, hard to find quiet places. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is where I am tonight. But uh, it's been uh, real exciting to be part of the uh, journey with Hope for Liberia, mm -hmm. and uh, particularly the uh, as a board member to watch from the very onset of the vision that God gave Joe and Karen for this ministry. And uh, it's been thrilling to see the faith um, launch at the very beginning with huge unknowns and then to watch as they sit back um, patiently waiting for what God's going to do next and to see how God literally blew the roof off of dreams <laughs> and plans um, yeah. with, you know, bringing fields for, uh, chickens and then bringing the chickens <laughs> and bringing the um, funds to open up a school and uh, serve kids and the wells that are being uh, done. Uh, it's been a, a huge honor to be part of that process, um, going through the process even with the uh, uh, government to get the charitable status over yeah. this past year. Yeah. Um, you know, huge moments of just leaning on God and waiting for God's mm. timing to, to be right. And uh, it, to see Joe and Karen faithfully stand by this dream and this vision um, and to, to watch it mm. unfold has been really super exciting. And uh, what we see today feels like huge mountains being moved and opportunities being opened to benefit um, the people of Liberia. Mm. And I, I love the heart of what I've seen too in, in Joe as he's been in the field there in Liberia. And we've had conversations about how mm. Joe uh, wants to really not just hand out to people in Liberia, but mm -hmm. to really help empower and equip the people locally there yeah, with man. resources and tools to be able to make a difference in their own lives so that it's sustainable. Um, that's true ministry uh, and changing and transformation of lives. And God is changing lives. So thanks for uh, yeah, stepping man. out there and doing it all. Well, thanks for, you know, always standing with us, man. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and, you know, switch off your, your camera, but stay on just in case we need to bring you back on a little later. Is that cool, Sue? Absolutely. Okay, man. So I, I'm going to introduce you guys to someone who I just met on my last trip to, um, to Liberia. 
and his name is uh, Eleazar, and he's way up in an area called Ganta. And um, he's just coming on online here. And it's one of those things where um, it's, it's difficult for these guys to get a good connection. There he is, Eleazar, how are you, brother? I'm doing fine, brother. <laughs> hey, man, thank you so much for, for making this work for us. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, so Eliezer, we, we met last, um, uh, just this past April, Pastor Sam, Apostle Speaker, and myself, we came to speak at your, at your church's anniversary service. And we just kind of, uh, we, we just connected, you know, we just knew that you were the real deal and you had such a heart for, for the people you were serving. So this is the first time people in our community are hearing about you, Eliezer. So give us a little bit of your background and how you got started in ministry? Well, uh, <clears throat> I I am a pastor and I'm a father. I always like to be called a father because hmm. practically everyone called me daddy. daddy. That's how many, everyone called me in the community. Yeah, yeah. Because of the number, the number of children we have, I mean, we, we rare. Uh, my wife and I felt called to ministry and I've been in the pastoral ministry for like uh, mm. 32 years now. 32 years now, yeah. Yeah, my first, my first time into ministry was in, uh, my first time into ministry was, I, my active ministry, I started as a youth minister, but to become a pastor and a church planter was during the war. During so the during war. the war, I planted a church in Ivory Coast, Abidjan, I planted two churches. Okay. And I, I went to school in Nigeria, I planted a church there and I came back I planted a church in Liberia, but we have to go back into exile. And I planted a church in Guinea, the Republic of in Guinea. Guinea. Okay. But, but since I came back, I've been involved. We've been, we started a church planting movement. And mm -hmm. we felt that the church is God's vehicle for reaching the nations. So we started that. But one of the things that we did during the, um, one of the things that we did was to put in children. We started dealing with children. We took in, we took in twelve children of war, and we started raising them up. Okay, and so I, I want people to understand what you're saying because you say, you know, we just we took in twelve children. You have five biological children, and then you guys five took in children. right, and then you took in twelve children 12 and basically children. adopted them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes, that's what we did. That's what we did. Wow, so we wow. took 12, of, 12 other children of war. And wow. the Lord, you know, God has been very faithful. Uh, God has been very faithful. And he showed us exactly what we needed to do. God kept providing our needs for all these children. Can't imagine. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that really happened was uh, how we brought them up, uh, what we did for them in terms of... Uh, in terms of raising them in a godly way. But the most exciting thing is all of them know the Lord Jesus. That's right. They, all of them know the Lord Jesus. Yeah. And we were thinking, but how can we make these children useful in the community? So we started a school called the Heritage Impact School. So yeah. we felt that school is, our, is part of our heritage, is God's heritage. So Bible was, the Bible was, I mean, the Bible is very cardinal to our teaching there. So Bible courses are taught in the school regularly. So our children have opportunity to study the Bible. Our children have opportunity to do a lot of things. By the grace of God, all of them today, through nurturing them in scriptures, they have become people of God. They are they either serving in a church as mm -hmm. either pastors, evangelists, or music director, or worship leader. So they Amazing. said in different ways. Yeah. Amazing. So I'm right showing, now, I'm showing some pictures here. Can you see the noise on your screen? Yeah, I'm seeing it. Okay. I'm seeing it. And this is like another stage of development that you've been able to get to in your school, right? Yeah. Yes. The school started in our in our house, in our home. Hmm. We left our we would we would sleep on the side, and then start this, run the school regularly. My wife and I. Then. Uh, Later, today the school is now up to grade 12. Mm. It's a high school, Amazing. full high school. So 
to meet up with the demand and many people sending their children into the school, we started putting money into construction. Mm. So right there, the photo that was just shown by you is we are trying to construct a three-story building yeah. which will okay. host approximately 700 children. 700 so children? Some of these children have returned. Wow. Yes, 700 children. So some of these children have returned from college. They are now heading the school as principal. Some of them are now pastors taking over from me. And Amazing. some of them are church planters <laughs> and I'm mentoring them also in the church planting. And some of them are farmers. So love, they are there in leadership role in I the love, school, in the church. I love what, what you're doing. Uh, just in a couple of minutes, Eliezer, because we have, I want to get to Apostle Seeker and Pastor Sam and I have some other friends here in Canada. Tell me a little bit about uh, the ministry you experienced when we came and ministered at your at your church. How did learning about the roots of our faith, how did that help you? Yeah. Oh, you know, uh, when we when you spoke about the backstage, starting from the backstage, the, bike, <laughs> the cultural background yeah. of the Jewish people. You know, I have been doing, I have been doing, uh, I've been teaching at Bible College mm -hmm. and I also I've been training pastors in service pastor training and we use what we call orality we use storytelling we oh sure we, because there are many people that are not educated so we try to paraphrase the scriptures and teach it mm -hmm. but what you brought in our life is is the uh giving the background giving going to the backstage it makes the people to understand that the bible of the, the, the bible stories are not just from heaven straight down when mm -hmm. it took place in a cultural context so people are excited to know that That's even awesome. jesus was a man people are excited to know that jesus was a man mm -hmm. jesus had profession and even when you talk about the background of the lady with the issue of with all the, the issue of blood, blood all yeah. the stories touching it people get to understand is that jesus lived here people mm -hmm. I had to understand that Jesus, you know, Jesus was a real person, even though he's God, but he was a real person. So it has challenged a lot of people, their lives and things. So yes. it really, it, it has really helped me. And most of my church planter today, we are talking about going to the back stage, right? Amen. Um, one of the things that we really want is maybe printed copies of your books, mm -hmm. of your book on that, so we can study that together. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm looking it's forward to so coming good. back to, uh, to Ganta in September. Uh, God willing, I'll be leaving wow. here on September the 9th. And so we'll be there for, for three weeks, uh, teaching and training and doing whatever it is that God calls us to do. So I look forward to seeing you in September. Eliezer, thank you so much, my brother, for taking the time. And I know the effort it takes to, uh, to make something like this happen. So thank you so much. I can't wait to see you soon. Okay, brother? Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you. All right. Well, guys, that, that's uh, Pastor Eliezer. And you need to understand that on Sunday, we did, remember, Clyde, we were doing kind of a walkthrough? Yes. And everybody's network was crazy. And, you know, where he lives, uh, the city uh, power, all the power in the city where he lives was switched off. There was none. And he didn't have a generator to have lights. So he went to somebody else's house to get into a place that was lit just so he could talk to us. So, you know, these guys are real, real ministers of the gospel, you know, living in, in, um, in tough conditions and pastoring in tough conditions. And Clyde, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind maybe just uh, praying for, for Eliezer, for his children and for his ministry. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the privilege of, meeting together like this mm -hmm. this means of communication is a gift to us you say in the 24th chapter of matthew that this gospel shall be preached in all the earth we are so excited to be a part of that and father we are very blessed to have our precious brother Eliezer with us mm. this evening sharing. Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful heaven sent vision uh, that you have given to him and to his team and to his 
family, his dear wife, mm. and these wonderful, wonderful mm. children, uh, all 17 of them, Lord. <laughs> then we could add to that all the graduates of the school, and mm -hmm. uh, we pray for each one, Lord. This is a huge family. And uh, as we pray for them, so we lift up each one with whom Joe has made contact over these last two years. And uh, we think of our, our brother Sam, and we think of brother Daniel. Uh, I think we call him the apostle. Yes. And uh, we think of all the others, Lord, that you are going to introduce over the years ahead. And we pray from our hearts that we will, Lord, jump into this with the fervency of the Spirit of God, the love of Jesus, and Lord, the power of the working of your Spirit in every aspect, whether it's, uh, Lord, the ministry aspect of sharing the mm -hmm. teaching, uh, the raising of finances, uh, the communication one with another, the putting together of all the projects. Mm -hmm. uh, we just lay this before you now and thank you for the privilege we have of lifting all of this vision to you and dear Joe and Karen and the team of their board that you put together. Bless each and every one mm -hmm. in the direction that they take ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, Amen. I am going to attempt to bring on said apostle, Apostle Daniel Seeker. He is an awesome, awesome guy, and we were really struggling to getting him on the other day. So I see the preview, and let's see if he's able to uh, connect with us. I see the audio is coming in. Let's just give us a moment. You know, like I said, this isn't like any other country that I've ministered in, Clyde where we have state-of-the-art technology and, <laughs> and, and everything else. That's right. Uh, it's a struggle. There he is. Apostle Seeker, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you. Welcome, Pastor Joe. Hey, thank you for, for doing this. I know, I know it's tricky, so thanks yeah. for taking the time, sir. And Daniel, I... <laughs> I'm hearing your voice for the first time, and it's exciting because when you came on the other day, I was thinking, I just would love to hear him speak. <laughs> and there you are. It's, uh, How are you doing, sir? How are you doing? He's, he's hey, doing, very really good. good. Um, Apostle, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of breaking up so we'll, we'll try to have a conversation and if we lose the signal hey oh, okay. ministry in liberia right <laughs> yeah yeah i know that's it that's liberia that's like tell us a little bit about our connection joe amaral hope for liberia apostle seeker reform church how did that happen what's going on whoa 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 pastor joe uh, uh we came we 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 we, we are overwhelmed with your involvement not just with Liberia, but with our church, even the little, the little child, you know, in the church. I mean, appreciate Pastor Joe, mm -hmm. the little child in the church, every little child in the church, appreciate Pastor Joe. You know, it's a great blessing, especially just the ground floor. You know, we are doing a very great project. We didn't even know how we would have gone about it. Mm -hmm. But we, we knew that we needed to do something because our offices, the entire church floor was 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 gone. Okay, yeah, just is. as you see, yeah, entire church floor was gone. Yeah, you know, boom, hope of Liberia. All I can say, or uh, I mean, or uh, the name is 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 really is really a blessing. Just the name, hope for Liberia. Mm. So you have been, I mean, hope that has been a very great thing, God, for you. Thank God for every person walking along with you, even uh, Pastor uh, 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 Sam. Yeah. I mean, he was overwhelmed when, you know, when, yeah. I mean, we are so grateful. It has been a blessed time. Everybody appreciate, everybody appreciate. So, I mean, we have been greatly relieved. We have gone far. 
I mean, right now, the entire water stop, the entire water stop. All oh, good, stop. good. Yeah. Good, thank right. God for that. You know, I, I know we can't have, you know, super long conversations on Zoom because it's hard to sustain the signal. And we've, you have been so great for all these three days. We've been trying and trying, and I'm so glad that people yeah. are getting to, to yeah. hear yeah. to hear your voice. Yeah. And uh, right now, Daniel, we're planning to come back in September. And, you know, we're looking forward to doing uh, some okay. more ministry and some, you know, more teaching. And I want you to know that as we speak, both for you, Pastor Eliezer, and for you, Apostle Seeker, there's half a ton of rice coming uh, to, your, to your communities. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Eliezer, Pastor Sam's going to get in, hold, uh, in touch with you. And there's 20 bags of rice coming for you, yeah. for your family, your community. He sent me. He sent me. He sent, he, he sent me did. some money today. Of course, he sent me some money yesterday. Awesome, oh, Sam is amazing, amazing. And Apostle Seeker for you as well for Banana Town. We want to make sure. I mean, let me see. I think I got some pictures here of how many kids there are in Banana Town. Like it's, 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 it's unbelievable. Yeah. Let's see. Let's go down. Yeah. So here, there, there's some of the kids in the background. Oh my. <laughs> wow. There's a, there's a lot of kids in that place. And they, and, and they need to eat. And so I, I, I just want to say to everybody who's watching this, uh, thank you so much for all the donations that you've given over these past few months. And especially as Liberia has been going through, um, going through a round of, uh, of COVID, <clears throat> uh, your gifts have been able, have enabled us to take hundreds of pounds, literally uh, tons of rice to these communities. So that's coming your way, guys. Uh, Apostle Seeker, I know it hasn't been very long, but I wanted to introduce you to the people. They've seen your name and they've seen your picture and now they've heard, they've heard your voice. <laughs> so much I appreciate that. So much I appreciate that. So much I appreciate that. Amen. Yeah. And I want, I, want, I, want, I, want, I want every one of them to know that they don't understand. They don't understand what <laughs> God has used them, what God is still using them to do. They have really been a hope to lots of people. Especially, Amen. you know, during the time of the COVID, Pastor Joe, when you yeah. came in and you still come in, I'm telling you, Reverend Eliezer is a witness. There are a lot of out friends, you know, because of the COVID, they have just stopped of communication, but you kept coming in. I mean, talking to us, doing all you can. I mean, thank God for you so much that uh, you really, uh, God really used you to be yeah. a hope to lot of people we appreciate you we appreciate everybody so much god bless amen. you people so much amen thank yeah. you thank you for for sharing that i just want to kind of echo you know the words of, of apostle seeker i know eliezer feels the, the same way um you guys have no idea you know some people send in 20 dollars and they said what can we do with 20 bucks well we can buy a 25 kilogram bag of rice that can feed a family for a month i mean it makes it makes a big big difference <laughs> So thank you, uh, everybody who's who's contributed and helped. But we have some more projects that are, are upcoming. And in a few moments, we're going to go to Pastor Sam. He's just uh, connecting with his audio here. And I want to go to uh, to a dear friend of mine, uh, Pastor Olu Olumide. If you're listening in the background, if you can come on with your video and, and sound. There he is. There he is. <laughs> this is my brother Olu Mide. <laughs> he, is, uh, he is a Nigerian pastor uh, serving here in Milton, where I live, and I've been attending his, his local congregation. Wow. And um, just while we're waiting for Pastor Sam to, to come on, first of all, hello, brother. Great to see you. Um, share a little bit about what it means to you hearing about a ministry in Canada, you know, doing work in Liberia. What does that do for you as an African? <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. For uh, thank, uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Joe, for everything you've been doing. Like I always said to you, because uh, a lot of I live in Canada, and when you are talking here, a lot of people may not understand <laughs> what it means to to do a ministry in a, in Africa. So mm. I can I can connect with what Pastor Sam is saying. I can connect when you are saying that $20, you, they cannot imagine what $20 can do. 
you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and I always tell people in my church that, you know, for you to leave your comfort zone, to go to Africa mm -hmm. for ministry, God must be calling you. God must <laughs> really, really, because mm -hmm. a lot of people, might, they cannot mm -hmm. even begin to comprehend, you know, what cannot describe it until they go there and live there. You know, and we are not talking there just living in a five-star hotel, living with the people. Yeah. You know, so I mean I've lived it, I came from there. So that's why so like me appreciate what you are doing. So, I mean, I, I always said to people, we are actually living the scripture, what the Bible says in Matthew 24, Matthew 25, yeah. 30, 35, that when I was hungry, did you feed me? When mm. I was a lot of that's you it. are actually feeding people, you know, you leave your comfort zone. You know, to live, I mean, I live in Canada, I came from Africa, and I know what it is. You know, mm. so to live, to live the everything you have here and take the risk, even in the midst of COVID, when people are jetting out, people are running away, <laughs> you know, but you understand that the people there are still people living there, and I am not better than them. If they can survive there, I should be able to survive you. And you went there, even despite all that. To me, I really appreciate everything you are doing. And that's why from time to time, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that you are part of our church here. You come to church and you, yeah. you also give hope to them here. Yeah, when, when we're talking about Africa and what the good works are doing there, mm. it, it kind of makes them happy that at least, you know, the sincerity of your work, you know, you're not just going there, like somebody said, you're bringing in a sustainable ministry. Mm. A, a sustainable thing that can sustain, make difference in people's lives, no matter how small, you know, it, it, the, the impact it makes is, is it cannot, people here in Canada may not be able to understand or comprehend until they actually go mm. and they say, wow, <laughs> I mean, talk, talking about internet, you're even talking about internet, what about, what about light, even power? Yeah, know, water. Water, yeah. water to drink, you know, when they're talking about COVID that uh, you need to wash your hands and things that people in Africa don't even have water to drink. So we're mm. talking about using water to wash hands there, but yeah. this, this yeah. method that you, you yeah. went there and uh, I, I pray that God will continue to sustain your ministry. Uh, you are carrying the good works you are doing. God will reward yeah. you and, uh, and the people you are investing your time in, uh, you know, God yeah. will, you know, That's God, yeah, thank you. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Alden. Hey, I want to speak to my yeah. father-in-law for a second here before we continue. So, right. Pastor Clyde, when are you going to join me on a trip to uh, Liberia? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll begin with prayer backing from Canada. All right, all right that's good. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> all right, let's see. We have Pastor Sam. Are you there, sir? I'm here. There he is, the man of the hour. Pastor Sam, how are you, sir? Yeah. I'm Sam. doing good. You're doing good? I'm good. I'm good. Well, good. I just want to speak to everybody who, who's watching. You, you've probably heard um, this, this name a lot, you know, Pastor Sam, Pastor Sam. And he's been on a couple of times with me, but there's no way we could have um, a, a Lift Up Liberia event, you know, without having, you know, Sam join us and talk to us a little bit about what's, uh, what we've been doing and working on the ground together. And, you know, Sam, I've, I've been posting a lot about what we're doing and the work we've been doing with the community center and the school and now the orphanage that we're building and, you know, the, the, the chicken coop ministry and all of this kind of, you know, amazing amazing kind of stuff. But right now we're entering into something super, super exciting. But before we get to that, I'm going to let you bring greetings to everybody who's listening. And before, greetings, you, do those, before you do those mm -hmm. uh, greetings, Brother Sam, I just want to say that your name has become a household word. <laughs> between us and that. Joe and between Marion and I and <laughs> Joe and Karen, it's just Humble Sam, 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 Sam. <laughs> we love you. I'm humbled to hear that. Thank you. Bless you. Love your you guys too. Yeah, yeah, we'll just bring you some greetings, Sam, and then we'll, we'll talk about what we're doing in Grand Boston. 
Yeah, greetings to everyone tonight. Uh, um, this call, greetings to you all from Liberia, from Hope for Liberia, from the uh, Joyous Christian Center family, from Kiris Bird, and just from Liberia as a whole. And then the, the news from Buchanan. I'm not, not actually Buchanan, but from Grand Bassa County. Yeah, um, uh, what yeah, is called we, William we, Porter Town. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that in just a minute, brother. Yeah. I just want to know, uh, how's the community doing with the uh, with the COVID, you know, outbreak in Liberia? How's how's that going? Yeah, it's 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 kind of really scary. Mm -hmm. uh, really scary because like, um, and the saddest part about it is like, there's a parable that says, every time you dress the, uh, we call it the boogeyman or the old man baker, mm -hmm. and then you say this is a devil. And, and actually it's not a real devil. And the day the devil comes to town and the, you're telling the children, this is the devil, they don't believe it anymore. Mm. So it's like, that's what, what is happening. COVID is actually here in town and killing a lot of people. Even some of our friends, our lost school friends from COVID. Mm. But it's like, because previously, like last year during the yeah. first outbreak, the information was not given properly, no proper training. So people they didn't believe it. So now it's like people are not even accepting that it's actually in town. So, but it's real. We've had people come at the community center, health workers, to tell us it's real. They got friends that have died. They got friends affected. We've had doctors on the radio, on the TV talk about it. So it just, and especially with the kind of society we have, you can lock down. If you lock down, it's like you get kill everybody. Yeah. People have to work to survive. Yeah, yeah, we got to hustle. So just, yeah, yeah, to, to hustle. So it just, it, it, it's kind of a very difficult for vast majority of the people. Yeah, it's kind of, then, then even like hospital. My wife was at a hospital like three weeks ago to remove a tooth. Mm -hmm. And at one of the biggest hospitals, and she said the disappointing thing was they, they had a doctor come out and say, look, Everyone who is here, who is not in severe pain, you got to go home. So they were turning away patients at the hospital because of the COVID yeah, patients because, that like, were there already? Yeah, they, yeah. Because, yeah. And then not just COVID, but they're afraid. You know, they don't have the capacity, the training, oh, okay. and the technique to cope. Yeah. So once you got any other thing, just go home. So I even know that somebody is not in pain, they should go home. So it just gave you an idea of what COVID coming to Liberia is, is actually going to be. We, we don't really have a yeah. Equip health facility and health centers. Yeah. A lot of health centers don't have medication. The health system is broken down. And most of the people rely on private clinic. Yeah. So it just, yeah. So the only, the safest thing we do now is stay by yourself, your family, wash your hands, and uh, don't yeah. be in too much crowd. Just it's better to stay safe than to expect to get uh, sick and you know, do home treatment. We had to buy some drugs. Yeah. Even like the like the center on Sunday, we bought some. Uh, yeah, we were able to get some mags. Some. Okay, so I was know, that, is that with the money that Hope for Liberia sends in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's tell the people. Yeah. So uh, last week, guys, again for you who are, who are joining us uh, on on Facebook yeah. and, and other platforms, uh, I asked that uh, you guys you know send in some money so that we could buy a large amount yeah. of masks and hand sanitizer and rice yeah. and stuff. And you guys blew us away. I mean, we raised so, so much money. And that's why we're able to send, you know, half a ton of rice to Eliezer's community, to Fossil Seekers community, to the Joyous Fountain community, uh, to some other communities, to Banana Town, to, uh, to Tesha Town, which you guys all know, my sweet little Lorpu lives there. And we wanted to make sure yeah. that all the kids there were taken care of. And, and now, Sam, because I don't want to keep you guys too late, because I, I know you're, you know, you're, you're four hours ahead of us. Yeah. But I, I want to share with the people a little bit about what we're entering into right now. So I'm going to give them the background story, okay, Sam? And then I'm okay. going to have you share your experience that you had on, on Saturday. <clears throat> so uh, on Thursday night, guys, I, I, was, I was sitting here in my home, and there's a newspaper. It's called this one here. You can see it. It's Front Page Africa. And because I subscribed to their channel, they put out a JPEG image of their front page for the next day, the night before, so you can see what's coming up. Uh, you can't click on anything, you can't, you can't read, but you can at least see what the, the headline's gonna be. And I saw this here, this uh, drinking from contaminated creeks. 
and uh, I read the article the very next day, and they were talking about how this community in a place called Grand Bossa County in uh, district, second district, uh, had really, they were having problems getting, getting clean water. And so I do what I always do. I said, Pastor Sam, see if you can find the guy who wrote this article and see if you can get a hold of him to see what kind of information he can, he can give us. And next thing you know, Pastor Sam writes me the next day and he says, hey, the journalist uh, responded to me and he's gonna, one of his guys is gonna take us to, to this village on, on Saturday. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, Sam, about uh, the journey to Grand Bassa County to this William uh, Potter uh, village, and I'll, I'll be showing some pictures as you're talking. Okay, go ahead, brother. Yeah, it was, it was, it was eventful. And first, like, I was like, what is it all about? You know, driving four hours, like going four hours, and then, but then when I got there after four hours drive, mm. and saw the village, and saw the water, and saw the kids, I said, this, this, this four hour drive was worth coming. And, you know, contaminated water, especially during the rain season. Like this, like and what you're seeing a, on the screen, Sam. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The water runs so all the water feces, and everything just going to that water. And then I was talking to a couple of people, and the scary thing is that when running stomach comes, it, it is like a regular occurrence. That's what usually happens. A lot of kids will die, family. And the guy was telling me they're so big. He says it's like for them, they are just become a normal way of life. They accept it. They're for accept, safe drinking they, water. They've, they've they, accepted they just accept having yeah. Sam, they, they've that's, accepted having bad water. That's just that's just the way it is that, for them. That's 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 how they live and 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 having having a you talking about safe drinking water is something they only dream about. They only dream about. So going there and seeing them and telling them that we were interested in seeing the place and they should keep us in prayer and let's see what will happen. Just, just a visitation there the tours, nobody has done that, nobody cares. And, and, and it was, it was really hard searching to just see that. And, you know, I, I came by like 10, 11 at night, but it was worth going, it was. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna show them some of the pictures you sent me, Sam. These are, these are some of the children who, who are at this, you know, small, small community. And w w when I saw the, these pictures, I mean, I mean, it just began to, yeah. uh, to break, to break my heart. And I said, God, we've got to, we've got to do something for, for these precious kids because nobody should have to drink this, this kind of water. So, this is what we're asking. Uh, first of all, thank Sam. I, I, I don't even know if the word thank you is enough for driving four hours into the jungle yeah. to get these videos, to get these pictures, to verify that they really do need the water and then drive four hours back. And then you have to preach the next morning. So brother, I can't thank you enough and for your, your incredible, your, your just how selfless you are in, in doing these things. And so, so when Pastor Sam brought me back this footage and this report, I just, I knew instantly something clicked in me and said, God, this is our fourth well. This community needs a well and they need it quickly. And so we, yeah. Sam is actually going up to a place called Banga tomorrow. That's where little yeah. Roku is. He's going to go deliver half a ton of rice uh, to them and then to Banana Town on the way up. And the guy who dug the well at Banga, we're trying to see if he is willing to go way out into the bush and do the well for, yeah. right, for this community as well. Yeah, we're yeah. looking at about uh, 7,500 US dollars, 9,300 Canadian dollars to, to do this well. And in the past, when we've come to you guys, our friends, our faithful partners, uh, you have come through. And I'm asking again, uh, as a dad who has kids, I mean, who can just grab water whenever he wants, I'm going to ask that you would that you would pray about doing something to help us get the well for these children. And what what's awesome about a well is that it's not just for those kids you saw on the screen. Once a well is working and it's functioning, that thing can last for generations. We can provide yeah. water for a one-time investment of 7,500 US dollars. We can pr provide hundreds of maybe millions of gallons of water for these for these children and this is what we're we're praying about doing and i will put up on 
on the screen here uh, how you can you know get a hold of us and for those of you who want to to donate you know you just go to hopeforliberia.com for those who live in canada you can send an e-transfer to give at hopeforliberia.com and just mark it well we'll know exactly where it needs to go and you can screenshot this or just go to our website when we're when we're done here and um, I would like to ask, um, let me see, I, I'm going to ask uh, Apostle Seeker uh, if you would mind uh, praying as we fundraise for this well, for this community. Would you mind, brother? Yeah, sure. So, sure. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you are doing and the way in which you are doing it in a time you are doing it and the people you are doing it through. We thank you for hope of life, for Liberia. We thank you for every man, for every family. We thank you for Pastor Joe. We are grateful. Lord, you know that we are grateful. You know how Amen. much Lord raised up hope within us by this ministry and your servant and the people that are back again. We lift up Lord that which is going on. We commit your hearts Lord, your word says you will shake the heavens and the earth and you will move people. And therefore, we pray that you will touch the hearts of people. You will convict people. Even as you have raised your servant, you will raise up men. You will raise Very up nice. women that will Thank stand you, with him, that will, that will believe what is happening because it is happening. We thank you, Father. Let there be a move of your spirit because this can only happen mm -hmm. when you move in the law. We thank you for the hearts that you have prepared. And we thank mm -hmm. you for many hearts that you are still preparing. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. We appreciate it. We pray for more open doors. We pray for more men and women to, to stand up for this cause. We say, Lord, to you be all the glory. Thank you ever so much in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, you, you, you kept saying, you know, we lift up, we lift up, we lift up. And this is what we're calling the prayer part of our ministry. We're calling it Lift Up yeah. Liberia. You know, it's yeah. such a, it just, just like Hope for Liberia was the perfect name for what we were doing, bringing hope to Liberia. You know, we're lifting up, we lifting up the people and, and the church of Liberia. And uh, before we, we, we close off in, in prayer here, uh, just uh, any of the uh, the pastors, Eliezer, Apostle Seeker, Pastor Sam, uh, is there anything you guys want to say? You know, there's, you know, uh, with all the platforms, we have almost 15,000 people that this is going to go out to. And I don't know if five people are watching or 500 people, but potentially this can go out to everybody who's on our list. Is there anything you want to say to the Christians here in Canada who are who are standing with you? Yeah, like, like, like uh, I, I would like to say, uh, I ask everybody that is, you know, right now listening to us, we, we please, that we need to lift up Pastor Jewel uh, in the hands of God. Or, 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 or the hope is not only in the sense of just the material or even the word of God, but Pastor Joe goes beyond even us. Pastor Joe comes down. You know, you know, when you eat what we eat, that raises hope. You, when you go yeah. to the village and you yeah. eat in the village, like when we go to Banga and you saw the candy, Pastor Joe, honestly, Reverend Eliezer, Pastor, Pastor Sam will say that not many white people do that, but you <laughs> eat everything that we, you know. So my, I personally want to ask that though, we all should lift up Pastor Joe because we don't know mm. if we carry him in an extraordinary way just to make sure that somebody gets hope, you know. Yeah. So that, that, that's what I just want to add. We are so much part of you. you. We are praying along with you. And I think praying with you, we, we, we have you go far. That That's just what I want to add up. Yeah, thank oh, you so hey, much. Amen. Thank you. Thank yep. you. And uh, Eliezer, um, he talked about eating with people you guys gave me a member of my, oh, hang on a second. Hang on. It's going to come to me. The, the bread. Don't, don't tell me. Ah. <laughs> hey, we, we had GB, right? We had GB. Yeah, GB. And the bread. I called it by the wrong yeah. name. Well, mono bread. bread. Mono bread. Mono bread, right? 
you're quite a man of Bray. Yeah, you're quite a man of Bray. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. What do you want to say, brother? Yeah. So, Pastor. Yeah, I'm so grateful to God. You know, the opportunity is is so great. Mm. Like the children, the people in the rural area, in Liberia, in the uh, mm. in all the Shanti communities, they have they, the opportunity is there that they can come and know Jesus. But how will they do that? It's not just giving them the word of God, but also it's by our love. Jesus said, when, Jesus said when you were, Jesus said when I, when, when, when I was hungry, you fed me. Mm. When I was cold, you clothed me. When I was, uh, when, I was, uh, when I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you visited me. Then you would say, how did I do this? He said, so long you, you did it to the least, yeah. you have done it to me. So Jesus, mm. service to Jesus, it's not about you saying you love the God that you do not see, but you also, the expression of your love to God is the expression of your love to your brother and sister. And Jesus also asked the disciples, he said, who is your neighbor? The story of the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. Who is your neighbor? Our neighbor necessarily is not a person that does something good to us. That does something right for us. But our neighbor is the one that we see in need and we do for them. Mm -hmm. So we are more of a neighbor to those yes, to you, you are. that are Joe. <laughs> we are more of a neighbor to those that are also God is using to give to you. So we want them <laughs> to understand that you have people near you in spirit, in heart, in Liberia and across Africa. We want to Amen. say thank you very much and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, brother. I can't wait to come back and see you guys. Pastor Sam, do you want to close us out? Anything else you yeah, want to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we just want to say to you, Pastor Joe, to Karen, the family, to Clyde, and all the wonderful people in Canada, all your partners and supporters. Sometimes they might not have the idea what they're sending to Liberia means. Like mm -hmm. um, the first brother who is from Africa and doing ministry in Canada was saying, yeah, sometimes you send your $20, yeah, yeah. your $50, your $20, your $100. You don't have the idea how much impact it makes in Africa. So mm. we're just grateful to you, especially at this time. Yeah. And people are just overwhelmed and people are just grateful. Like even the, when we visited the blind community under the rain, and they, did, they, they didn't imagine that, that at this time that people would think of them when everybody is thinking about themselves. So we continue to say thank you, and we thank you all for Amen. making us to know that there's also hope in life for Liberia mm. and to live in Liberia because to do ministry in Liberia, you got to be ready for by God. So yeah. you you all have just inspired us, Pastor Joe, and Amen. all the wonderful people. You are just inspired us to know that, especially me, that God hasn't forgotten us. That's, That's right. why even on my anniversary, I will drive four hours to go, four hours to come and feel so good doing that. So may God continue to strengthen you all and to know that there are thousands of people you give in fresh water, education and food to some of them you might not be able to see mm. physically, but God remember that. God remember that. And we thank you and grateful Amen. continue to pray for you. And please also continue to remember us in prayer, yes. especially with this COVID that God will keep us to walk in wisdom. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Yeah. To my, to you. my dear father-in-law, Clyde, I want to bring it back to you. This is your first real experience, you know, with all the pastors and hearing everything that's going on. Tell me real quickly, what's going on in your heart? And then please close us out in a, in a time of prayer. What's really going on in my heart is the magnitude the miracles and the ministry mm. that God has put before us. We are sowing seeds in these days mm. that are going to multiply hundreds and thousands and millions of times. Mm. And God's hand is here 
upon these precious ones that you have been called to, Joe, and the prayer teams and those that have gathered to be part of this tonight, we have joined together. The scripture talks clearly about if two of you shall agree. It's not just two that are agreeing here tonight. It's a group. It's an embryo. It's a beginning. It's a forward thrust. And in the midst of all of this, Father, we come now. We raise our hands to you and we say, Lord Jesus, send your power, send your word, send your anointing day after day. And as dear brother Sam has said, Lord, we come and take authority over the spirit of that COVID disease and we ask, Lord, that it will ripple, the Holy Spirit will ripple through that land, protecting, Lord, your people, protecting the leadership of that country, protecting, Lord, every aspect of government in that land and the churches throughout that land, that they would know that the hand of God has come upon them and given them a release and healing to move into the future vision that you're laying before them. I pray for dear Joe and Karen, Lord. I thank you for my precious wife. And as, the, as, as we have seen each one of these tonight on this screen, so we commit ourselves and yield ourselves to you for this mission. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Well, I just want to thank everybody uh, who, who joined us uh, this evening. Like I said, whether you're, whether you're watching it uh, live as we're doing this or you're watching it after the fact, uh, thank you so much for, for helping us to lift up Liberia, lift up these, these men and women of God. And we just want to put this before you. We want to see this well in, um, in William Potter Town uh, be dug even this week, if we can. If we can raise the finances, we will send it as soon as possible and get that brother up there and start digging that well. And you have the information there on the screen. And if God moves you to give, it would just mean more than we could ever imagine. And so thank you, everyone who joined us tonight. We're going to do this again. Um, we're planning on the first Tuesday of every month. So August 3rd is going to be the next one. And even though God is doing all this stuff now, I can't wait to see what happens between now and, and August 3rd. And I'm looking forward to posting something on Facebook this week that we did, that we got the well for these incredible people. So thank you, everybody from Liberia and across the country who joined us. I love you guys. I can't wait to see you again. And we'll talk to you real soon, okay? Thank you for joining us, everybody. God bless you. Bless you.